just just do like the the I'm I'm such and such. Hit. I'm such and such. That's live. Up. Here we go. Ready? So three, two, one. Live from multiple places all over this world to talk about trolls. This is the Troll Blood Scrum. So now I'm going into that <laughs> annoying voice from the Battle for Breath thing. I don't know. I think Battle for Breath is brilliant. So, and I love the background music for, on that one. Thank you. So, and this oh, is my, yeah. I, I do these segues in the middle of trying to t say something. So, here we go. Back on it. So, welcome to Troll Blood Scrum. This week we are joined by our um, editor extraordinaire, Danny. What's up, guys? And we've po poached from uh, one of our uh, neighboring podcasts. We've got Daryl from Combo Smite. Good evening, all. Well, good, good evening, gentlemen. And we'll we'll jump right in there. No, no small talk. We're just gonna jump right in. So we'll go into the new. <laughs> we'll go into the uh, the book. See, that's why we need Dan, or we, that's why we need Matt and uh, and Dallas to keep me uh, to keep us going straight. So, oh well, no, we're good. We're, we're doing. Yeah, we gotta get right on this. We yeah, exactly. Wasting no time. Uh, no filler. It's all all prime cut. So no, we're gonna no, jump. No, no expense. No. Oh dang! I. No expense. Oh, what's the Jurassic Park line? Shoot. <laughs> Moving on. Spare no expense. Spare, Next, yeah, no, go. spare no expense. Spare see, no expense. see what I noticed, Danny. Though, when there's issues, when if you make a mistake, they get edited out. All mine stay in there. We, uh, we need to talk about well, that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Dunia finds a way. Of course. Yep. So we'll we'll do the our regular bookkeeping. So we do have a Facebook page. We're up to 667 likes. I was really hoping to see the 666 for a moment. But uh, we skipped right over that one. So if you're not already following our Facebook page, uh, follow that. And I'm back on Twitter on occasion. Um, so follow Twitter as well. And if you're listening to this as a podcast through the fine uh, podcast uh, feed at Hand Cannon Online, remember you can always watch us live on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Twitch. And you can watch us live and, and see what everyone looks like. 10 p.m. Eastern. Eastern, yes. There we go. 7 p.m. Uh, Central, and I think it's like 3 a.m. Uh, London time, as as our guest last week can attest to. Um, and Pacific. Pacific, 8 p.m. Mountain. There we go. I don't know what Central is. No. Oh no, cent Central would be one little hour less, so it's uh, 9 p.m. Central. Yeah. Anyway. Fas fascinating troll of focus know, news we're going through here. Yep, it's time yep, zones. Yep, yep, yep. So and uh, the battle for, or sorry, the battle reporter. Um, we've uh, actually, I just, just it's kind of sad when the person that's sort of supposed to be responsible it discovers features that their devs have added and didn't know. So we've <laughs> added a really neat feature when you select your scenario. There's a little picture of the scenario, so you can recognize what it is, not by the name because I don't know how many people actually remember the name of the scenarios, but by the picture, which makes things a lot easier. So um, check it out, and if you're not using it or you you were using it and stopped. Let us know why, because I, I, we have we've seen like a steady reduction in number of people using it, and we just want to see if it's something just because it's uh, you got out of the habit, or you just don't like it, or you find other things work better for you. Just let us know, because we won't always want to see more people using it and, and get more and more good data in there. So um, just follow, just ping me directly if you will, if you have any feedback, because we'd appreciate that. So that's the bookkeeping piece. I'm going to jump right into the news. So we've got, uh, it turns out, thanks to PP, we have a lot of news to talk about. Um, but we're going to start with the logo contest. So back in the beginning of the year, uh, Dallas came up with the fantastic idea of, of running a contest, asking our fine Troll Blood Scrum listeners to send us uh, their, their version of logo that we could use as po uh, for the podcast and promotional material on the website and whatever we felt we wanted to uh, put our name on top of. And um, our listeners did not did not fail to impress. So we received um, dozens of, uh, of entries from multiple people over that time period. And over the last month or so, we've been uh, having a fan favorite poll. Um, the the, the co-hosts were quite comfortable in what they thought they wanted. And we, uh, and so, but we want to make sure that the fans had a chance to um, input as well. So that's been going on the last month. And we finally have the results. So um, for those watching on the stream, you're actually going to be able to watch this as opposed to just uh, listening to what you want. So if you're, if you're listening to this, these will have been posted on the Facebook page, so you can watch yeah. them there. Tell so. your friends, these are the benefits of tuning in live. Exactly, it's all, it's all the yeah, sneak previews. So, so those watching on Twitch, you'll see a, a fancy tartan background with first place, second place, and fan favorite. So we're gonna go with the fan favorite first, uh, and this is the 
logo submitted by Oliver West. This is the, um, for those listening, it's the Madrak 3 shield la- leaning up against the Krill Stone with some spears in the back with the Trollbud Scrum written out. So that was, Danny, I think that was one of your favorite ones as well, was it not? That, 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 was, that was my favorite. Absolutely. I love that one. Yeah, I thought that one really captured the, the feel. So I was really, I, like it. I was glad that one uh, managed to get the fan favorite. So uh, next up, second place. And this was, um, this was a hard one. I think we, uh, we had a, a number of people, or a number of the, the hosts were sorry, hemming and hawing, but this one seemed to, to, get every, uh, to speak to everyone. This is the Trollbud Scrum logo submitted by Matthias Form. Now, Matthias submitted a ton of really, like, he, I think he submitted, I think, 12 different logos, and they looked fantastic. This is the one we, we settled on. It's the Trollblood Scrum with the Krill Stone. It looks like a Krill Stone in a field with some rocks against it with a, a blue circle background uh, with the Troll sc- Blood Scrum uh, around the outer side of the blue. So um, I really like that one because I like the just sort of the minimalistic piece to it where it's very it's a good crisp. itunes logo yeah it's it's something that you know immediately what it is it it immediately identifies us and it it really stands out so i i, I i'm i'm almost to me that the the first place and second place were both my favorite out of the two so um excellent job of matthias on that one and it, last, is, it is an excellent one yeah I, I i all of his stuff there's a few of them i might I'm, I'm hoping we can use a few of the other ones as well and last but not least, um, and I'm sure this doesn't come to a surprise to many of the people who are in the fan polls who've been commenting, but the piece by Tom Higgins, or sorry, Wiggins, my apologies, Tom, um, the troll, but it looks like uh, the, the head with the two, I believe they're Rathrock or they're just axes um, uh, with the circle behind saying troll blood scrum. Um, that was uh, by far the unanimous choice to the hosts and through the votes, it got a, a number of uh, a number of the votes as well. So. Um, you know, looked forward to seeing that in uh, in Mer- Trollblood Scrum merchandise coming up soon, and and in a, in a very timely manner, those watching on this this on the feed will now see the new logo on the feed. So, wasting no time and trying to at least add a, a certain level of professionalism to our feed. So. So for <laughs> so for the, for those who have won, we're going to reach out and um, uh, figure out the prizing. I know the prizing right now was a Borka two, a Borka one, and a set of of troll blood dice. We just got to figure out how we're going to break that up. Um, so we'll reach out to you, and make sure we have the best version of the images. For those who entered and didn't win, um, we're going to do a, 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 a much more in depth uh, call out on the Facebook page and. Uh, we'll do some other piece, uh, other um, thank yous online when and on the the cast when we have the entire the entire crew there um, to go over that. But for those uh, the, the winners, thank you so much. Um, it again and to everyone who submitted, we were just blown away with the quality of the uh, the uh, the images that were provided. Yeah, I think uh, I mean the fan community is great. I mean that they read would would do this for us, and and uh, it's been. Really fun watching them and looking them, watching them come in and and uh, analyzing them and and talking about them. I think they did a great job. Oh yeah, exactly. Couldn't agree more. So thank you to everyone. So so what we'll do is we'll move into the, so the news section, which we normally cover whatever PP drops on the day, um, will be covered now. But because it sounds like it's going to replace our original Q and A topic, just because there's a lot to get through, I'm going to jump ahead and talk about games played. Um, now, Daryl, I know you mentioned a Borka one game that was less than stellar. Do, do you have a thirty-second version where it doesn't sound as bad as that it really was? Uh, let's use "game" in quotation marks. Okay. So, well, I have, <laughs> it was a Borka one game. It wasn't the list or Borka one's fault, but it is the epitome of a bad draw. So, if there's any of you out there who are just starting and you're not sure what a bad drop is. Watch that video when Nick puts it up. I think he just put it up on YouTube. I think so. Yeah, it was bad. Um, I managed to control my salt content. It was a little bit lower than normal. Uh, <laughs> that was something I'm working on. Uh, but uh, yeah, that game was bad. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh, I think we've um, all had that, right? Turn three or four. I'm just I I'm looking at the table, just trying to figure out if I can get an assassination run or let Nick kill my models for a few more turns to clock out because he's good at that, or (laughs) just something to get some scenario points. And I'm watching, and I'm looking at the table, and there was nothing that I could see that could be done other than continue to take models off and just say good game to Nick. So 
we uh, we ended up calling it. So it's one of our shorter shorter games. But if you want to see what a bad matchup is, even though you've got a good list, what a bad matchup is, watch that video. Yeah, I think we've all been there at one time or another. Just it just you you lose the list chicken and you just wind up it not being uh, ideal. Yeah, and it wasn't a, a list chicken situation. It was we both made these lists during the week. Oh, okay. And we thought, you know what, this list will be fun. Let's try it. So this was my anti ghost fleet list. Well, and, maybe uh, can you run us through what was on the list? Just uh... to in mine. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let me bring it up. Give me two seconds. It's Borka one. Mm -hmm. Obviously, and this is Band of Heroes, and the reason why it's Band of Heroes is for the RFP. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, so you want to have all the RFP on all the infantry. So, uh, let me try and remember here. It's got a Max Long Riders with Horthel. Mm -hmm. Blades with the Command Attachment. Okay. It's got the Stone with the Elder. Now, is that Min Stone or Max Stone? There we go. Borka One Band of Heroes. So, Borka with Keggy, Earthborn, Rock, Axer. And Rock is in there for your Primal. And he's a solid beat stick and he's good. Yep. Axer again for Rush. Mm -hmm. Orthol, Fell Collar, Min Creel Stone with Elder, Max Fen Blades with the Command Attachment, and Max Long Riders. Okay. And that quickly gets you to 75 points. Um, the key thing with the list, which makes it really good, is with the Band of Heroes and the RFP, it's off melee attacks. Yes. Impact attacks on your long riders or melee attacks. Yep. So you're getting three dice RFPs. So you can carry right through a unit with those long riders. You can wipe out a full unit of turn with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then reposition. Uh, yeah, you can reposition. So um, the Arcane Ward would help them, give them an extra little bit of defense. And then you've got Mosh Pit for the Knockdown and Windmill to help you. The problem with the matchup that I had is that everything that Nick had was blessed. Oh, jeez. Everything that Nick had it negated tough. And all of his guns were magical. <laughs> all of his stuff was faster than mine. He had a greater volume of attacks. Um, oh, and his stuff, uh, a lot of it. Yeah, it just outthrew me. It was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was fun for one of us. <laughs> 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 now, now, knowing his list, what would you drop? If you could tech against him, what would you bring into that list? I would not have to tech against him. I would just take Ragnar, who is part of my tournament pairing. Okay. And what's in your Ragnar list? Oh, my Ragnar list is a POD. Okay. So it is, and I'll bring it up so I don't screw it up because I've been experimenting. So Ragnar with a rune bear, mm -hmm. two maulers, two earthborns, three axers, three whelps, three Janissa. Max Stone with Elder and a Sorcerer. Interesting. The uh, And what was your reason for three Axers? Because you can give them a plus six strength swing. And then that with a Thresher is nice. That is true. Because they go with what their base, what their base 14? Their base 14. And they plus go... one for the Stone. Yeah. Plus three for Rage. Plus two for Pulverizer. That is nice. And you can beat back with your Thresher. Yeah, I can see that being good. So you move in, you spin, kill everything, continue on. Um, on feet turn, they're only taking one dice damage off armor 19. And if you want, Ragnar can toss Dagon on them, so mm -hmm. they end up being defense 16. <laughs> so quite quite a strong list. Um, I played it when I was playing, experimenting into Kassam's, uh what is it, Blindwater Congregation theme force with all the eight box. Gators, box gators yeah. and he was fielding like four full units. It wasn't the one you were seeing on the internet. It was just maxed out, and it was a real pain to deal with. So I needed something that could put out a large number of boxes of damage. Interesting. So I was playing with Ragnar, so it turns out that this list field drops really well into just about anything. It yeah, did well that. into the Marauder spam when it was out because it could actually punch a hole in it. Well, and... especially, I mean, I mean, the double mod, Mauler and double Earthborn is just, it's just gold, right? Yeah, absolutely. And in 2017, I've been finding the Earthborn is amazing. Well, cause you've because you've got that. Always... 
yeah, that that the line of sight blocking terrain in the middle. So he's always getting that, and they're and they're putting they're putting more water down. Then you've got the he's going exactly. to the depth. Uh, and if you can get a, a hill out with Janessa first, you get plus uh, plus two from the hill as well. Yeah, which is the important thing with Janessa people. Um, amazing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Even not free, she's worth considering if you're fielding, especially more than one Earthborn. Yeah, and that's so. and we've talked about it in this cast a few times where I mean a lot of people sort of poo pooed her once she lost her wall in Mark Three, but that hill, don't put down that hill in the Earthborns. I mean the Earthborns are you're seeing them show up in more and more lists, which is good to see. And I mean they're so versatile, especially with if you've got a lot of Signar, they've got the immunity to the electricity. If you I mean they're just they've yeah. got they've got a lot of answers that uh, that uh, I think that are good. So it's interesting. I I, I, I like. And it's your... not that the hill. It's not that the hill gives a buff to the earthworms. It doesn't. It's still open terrain. But what it lets you do is boost their depth just that little bit higher when you're near. But they also, if they're the fully on the wall, they still get plus two defense because they're on a hill, right? So from the hill, yeah. But you can add that small four inch hill. Yeah, exactly. Of the uh, of the other train that's there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So but yeah, perfect. that's the Ragnar list that I uh, I ran or I would run, and it it'll do well. Okay. Good. Uh, Danny, should I ask if you've had any games? Oh, you can ask. Um, I've had a whole lot of zero games. Um, as you've seen in the chat, um, I uh, graduated recently and I walk tomorrow, but I have yet to get back into the gaming. True. So hopefully very soon, but um, I've got a new job and, uh, you know, just trying to figure that out. But I hopefully, hopefully very soon I can get some, uh, some models on the table and throw some dice. But That's good. Are you going to lock and load? Uh, not this year. Mm. I was planning on it, had the time requested off, and then my brother told me he was coming to visit. Uh-huh. And he's like, how about this weekend? I went, ah. <laughs> okay. Stuff happens, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's family. I haven't seen him for a couple of years. So. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely a, a good reason to, to skip it. So, yeah. Uh, for me, my normal Thursday game was going to be playing against someone who threatened to bring a nine charger list um, with. Um, What's her name that shoots a lot? You can tell I'm 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 up on all the cast oh. names. Thank you. Um, and so I built a list against that, and then in, instead he brought the new CID with a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of the trenchers with um, the new CID caster. So um, I realized how nasty this was against him, and it was pretty. It was in, in hindsight, it was probably similar to your. He felt similar to what you did, Daryl. Um, my list was Gunbjorn with Dozer and Smig and a Mauler. Double War Wagon, that's the new CID War Wagon. Um, nice. A gob and t- Gobber Tinker to, to give support to the War Wagons. Two Gremlin Swarms, um, a max unit of Warders for Shield Guard, and then a, a max stone with the Elder. So the, the thought behind this was the War Wagons are to run up. The Gobber will keep up as much as he can to heal what he can. Um, and with the amount of bodies out front, I should be able to do a, a fair bit of uh, impact attacks and take out a bunch of stuff. So um, in the end, the the winner, the, the, the MVP of the game was the go- uh, the one gremlin swarm that survived that managed to take out a full jack by itself, just turn after turn, oh, wow. because it's D3 plus three damage if it's base to base, and it just kept hitting in five damage, six damage, five damage, and then the mauler wind up finishing it off. But... I took out his. Uh, it was the hunter, so I took out his gun on the on the uh, on the gun the the first time or the second time. So it was just it was nasty. So I quite enjoyed that. But um, I wind up winning. <laughs> wind up winning on scenario. I threw I threw both the war wagons up because on his feet he couldn't do anything really because I he, he the way with all the, with the twenty seventeen terrain rules he didn't have a lot of clear lanes and I I left the wagons where they would be only one or two guys would be able to get into them. So under Gunbjorn's feet turn, he just couldn't shoot anything. And um, if I was able to roll even average dice, I probably would have got his caster on turn two, but I'd get I'll make all my shots except when it came to to actually hit him. And I'd roll like one damage, two damage. The spray would do like two damage. So I I just, I, I nickel and dined him, but uh, we both had cases where our dice went bad, but in the end, we had been playing for about three hours, and we figured, yeah, it's probably about turn seven. So the last turn, I just made sure I had enough points to win on scenario, and he had, he managed to knock Gunbjorn down, get some shots, but I was camping four or five at the time, um, 
and uh, and I had a couple shield guards there as well, so it, it be pretty much he wasn't able to do anything to Gunbjorn, so I won on scenario. It was a fun game, but I felt a little bad for, uh, for my opponent just because it was uh, my my tactics changed from trying to kill his caster to just sitting back and winning on scenario, which I hadn't done through most of the game. It's like, oh yeah, this game has a scenario cons- or portion to it. Maybe I should try that for the win. But in the end, it was a, it was a good game. So, okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's a novel thing when you realize you haven't been going through a scenario in quite a while, and then you try it, and you're like, oh yeah, this is a thing. <laughs> this, this will actually win me more games if I pay more attention to it. So, I've, I've never claimed to be good at this game. Winning's optional. Yeah, like I said, I've never claimed to be good or competent at this game, but I still like throwing dice around and, and uh, hanging out. So, okay, so that's games played. Um, Going into the hobby section, do you uh, have you been painting anything this week, Daryl? Lots. I've got a bunch of things on the table. I'm currently working on, well, Ragnar and the Axers. And then when I get tired of working on them, I'm still trying to finish up a board game I bought to play with my kids, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past. Oh, nice. It's got a bunch of, uh, bunch of minis in there. So I've got the turtles done. And the the thirty foot clan ninjas. Oh, thirty! Jeez, <laughs> was it thirty foot clan? So now I'm working on like Shredder and Fry and, and the other guys. So you're leaving. Oh, uh, that sounds board. awesome! I haven't heard of that. Is that a good game? Uh, it got a really high ranking on Board Game Geek. That's that's and, good. Uh, the the Kickstarter was maxed, and uh, from what I, I've sort of played with it a bit, just on my own to try and figure it out to play with the kids, and uh, it seems pretty solid. What age nice. range is it to focused towards? That. Ages, let me look at the box. Two to five players, 60 to 90 minutes, uh, 14 plus. Oh. Uh, my kids are young. My oldest is six, and my my younger one is just going to turn four. But you can dumb down a lot of these games okay. and get rid of a lot of the the, the intricate rules that mm-hmm. you just don't need, and they can have a lot of fun with them. Yeah, just, just role play, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like as an example, my, my daughter's six, but I play X-Wing with her. Oh, nice. And she's six, so... And that game is 14 plus as well. So there's a lot you can do. So any gamers out there who are moms or dads, you can still play these games with your kids. I can't tell you the number of games I've had of uh, Trollbloods versus Playmobil uh, Unicorns. <laughs> That's funny. Which somehow the Mountain King always gets to be on the Playmobil side and I always lose. But yeah, you never know. Well, that's what I would choose. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we've been, uh, we've been Lego figures, Lego figure machines. So Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, and I, right I have been working on my war wagon, but I haven't touched it all week, so I'm uh, have not put paint to uh, to to model all week. And Danny, I'm um, assuming you're the in the same boat as your games played. Uh, yeah, but I do have a little bit of news. Um, someone decided they needed some extra cash or go a different direction, so uh, I took their war wagon off their hands for fifty bucks. So oh, no. I have two now. So I'm pretty Sound excited about that. that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. You know, Fantastic. we'll see if I ever if I ever get to play with it, but you know. Well, Your timing the, couldn't be better. Yeah, the the CID for it, the final versions are supposed to come live in the next week or so. Oh, they are yeah, to uh yeah, according to Pagani's Twitter. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. If you follow him on Twitter, he posted about a week ago, he said one to two weeks, so unless I'm a big liar, which has been known to happen. Well not, not intentionally, of course. But uh <laughs> yeah. One to two weeks, some people were asking. <laughs> okay, that's, that's cool. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're jump into our news. Which, for those who aren't aware, the new Primecast landed this uh, today, and uh, at about the forty-five minute mark, and we recommend going out and listening to it because it's definitely worth listening. But around the forty-five minute mark, they start talking about the Northkin uh, theme stuff that's coming into CID shortly, and they have a whole bunch of spoilers. And I'd like to thank whoever typed this all out. Because I have had no chance to listen to uh, the podcast yet, and this basically summarizes almost everything from the uh, from the cast. So I'm going to start off with the summary, and they yeah, based... it's on the uh, Trollblood Facebook. Okay, it's on the Trollblood Facebook. So if, if you you're it. if you haven't checked it out already, make sure you do it. So so they're basically saying the Borka, uh, Borka's theme or the um, the Northkin are the uncivilized berserkers <laughs> from the north. Which really f- meets with the, uh, the 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 fluff they've done so far. So there's going to be a bunch of new stuff including new beasts and new units. It's going to be mostly Northkin, so I guess there's going to be some other stuff. Um, 
theme requires mostly North, Northkin models, which I think we knew because if you look at um, the special ability that um, Scully provides to the champs, if you include them, then champs become Northkin, uh, Northkin models. So I guess that's... Now I have a question for you, Fraser. Sure. Do you think that they're going to go uh, Viking theme? Interesting. With the Northkin? Because that's sort of what I'm reading between the lines is that they're going to go sort of Viking trolls. Interesting. Yeah, that could definitely... Uh, Sorry, Dan, so what ahead. do you mean? They're... Yeah, no, just like, what do you mean Viking trolls? Berserkers from the north who love to drink. Oh, okay. Yeah. As opposed to the trolls that's in the south that like to drink. Yeah, well, you've got your Scottish yeah. ones, right? Or Scottish themed Creoles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the North King ones, I'm sort of thinking, okay, if you wanted to transplant Scots, so your Celts, um, yeah, your Celts and your Picts, mm -hmm. or like the Pictish peoples, which are where the trolls are based on, and then you move that further north, and you want to keep that same sort of feel. To me, that says Vikings. Yeah, and that would be interesting if they actually speculation, but that's yeah. what I'm. And it, and it sort of falls with what they've done in the model so far, because Northkin and Borka all have the fur, which you typically associate more to the Viking, the Viking sort of uh, iconography, iconography than you do with the uh, the Scots with the with the kilts, right? Or with that the would be really interesting if they actually like had like a sub theme and they're like they actually we get some guys with like horned helmets and like very viking esque you know so it's like a very distinct look kind of changes it a little bit that would be interesting yeah, yeah somebody I'd... needs to do a long boat seeking conversion go <laughs> <laughs> well they did uh they did uh someone did a a boat they turned the war wagon into a boat and i think it might have been on lava but they did convert it into a, yeah, a boat or cool and there's also there's also been the airship one too, but that doesn't really match the uh, the, the North. Uh, the Viking theme. I didn't I didn't hear you just said. Anyway, moving on. Yes. So so <laughs> no, I, I like that idea. Like the going more Viking. So um, so they are saying that I gotta get back to where I was here. Um, the theme the theme will require mostly Northkin models, which again we had sort of guessed that that was going to be uh, interesting. No or few ranged weapon or ranged units. Um, doesn't say anything about the the beasts though. So I'm kind of curious because. Um, obviously the fire eaters will be a key to this. Um, can you imagine? Yeah, they would I say, can I, you... say that, I was just say I was just gonna agree with you. It's like that would be their only ranged, right? The if the fire eaters, because I mean the champions and the and the warders, you know, are I don't even know if the warders would be included, but yeah, just not a lot of ranged weapons yeah. there. Can you imagine yeah, if theme on your... uh, theme on Sorry, go ahead. You've got your magical zots from the uh the Northkin shamans and things like that. Exactly. Right? Otherwise. Yeah. Oh, you... and there was that troll in the in the Cricks whatever like spoiler thing in the magazine. He had that what looked like a hand grenade of some kind. If you guys recall that image. Yep. That that blurry image that uh, drove me crazy looking at. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine if theme unlocks uh, fire eaters so they're FAU? Can you imagine that bringing never happen. four <laughs> units of fire eaters? <laughs> Oh, they, they, I mean, as cool as that would be, they need, to, they need to not not do the FAU. They, yes, they need to give everything a faction limit so there's no spam. Make yeah, something I, good, but just make it not spammable. Yeah, I agree. I think I, everything needs to have a cap of three. So what, they're, so what we know for sure is Borka 2 is going to be looked at in CID, um, and he's going to pick up Field Mar Marshal Northkin. I don't know if we know what Field Marshal Northkin means yet, do we? I don't. From the, the notes I'm seeing, it doesn't actually specify what Northkin actually gives you. Stuff in his army will count as Northkin. Field Marshal, that's a that's a war beast. Usually ability, it's battle right? group, it yeah. The... Yeah, right, battle group. Yeah. So it makes his battle group Northkin, so I guess maybe it has some sort of like immune to cold kind of... Well, he already gives his battle group immunity yeah. cold. That's the Field Marshal he currently has. Oh, maybe he loses... I wonder if it's that plus some other They're stuff. Maybe, yeah, maybe it changes it. Yeah, maybe it's it also has cold and then something else or something. Yep. So, well, they're using theme forces to balance things around, correct? Yeah. So if a theme force says, you know, models get X, then that means the battle group will get it too. So that's their way around it. Oh. Uh, Spell that says friendly North get models get what have you. Right. That's, I think, what they're doing. Yeah, sounds okay. like it. Okay, gives them that keyword. So exactly right. So they are saying new supports will be new support pieces will be released that uh, that specify Northkin models. Um, 
So yeah. just like the long, the the long gunners, how they got the trencher, a new, the new trencher sub. Yep, agreed. So we yep. may see yep. we may see some Northkin specific uh, units that, that will convert other units. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what would be. I think we we know what happens with champs. It makes sense that they may do it with uh, warders as well. That would be interesting. I'm trying to think what else they could do that with. Because if there's not a lot of range, new range stuff they're adding, I wonder if they'll add new UAs, or sorry, um, CAs, command attachments, or solos that give existing ranged weapons, uh, ranged units, that Northkin ability. So they don't have to add Northkin units. They're just making existing uh, ranged ones. See, I don't think you're going to see that. I think you'll see um, things like the, the concealment around the, the Glacier King. And clouds and wind walls, so that things like blowing snow that keep people from shooting at you. Yeah, true. Right, so we can grant can... you ranged weapons. Like this is all conjecture. Yeah, exactly. So this, is, this is all this just ranged weapons. <laughs> Welcome the conjecture things. machine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we you can't wait the week to see the real killer. rules. We want to see that. We want to come up with our own rules now. That's hmm. fun. Of course. No, I like that. For. I like that the the <laughs> the clouds and stuff, so that they can get into Malie. And they take advantage of that. I like that. And I, I, I fully expect we'll get um, at least one new unit, you know, without uh, without range, you know, because we only have the warders and the and the champions as far as elite units. I guess yeah, exactly. I guess we have the fem blades and the crew warriors, but yeah. Maybe they'll make the Skinner uh, Northkin and make him good. <laughs> I'm excited for this theme when they when they finally drop it. They seem to be on a, a slow upswing for yep. team forces. Agreed. I hope I hope they I hope they fix them. I really do. I I want them to work, but I I'm just a, yeah, I agree. I just um, don't, I don't want I don't want it to be the only way to play the game. I don't. I wish that anyway. Yeah, and I agree. And, and going back to my game I played last week, it was out of theme, so it was I was a little confused. Like, where are my free models? Where are my special rules? It's, I had to sort of think about. Oh, I'm playing with a list just on I built on my own. So, I think we are getting sort of spoiled with theme, but we've we've touched on that before. So let's just keep on going through here. So. Um, they do say that there's, and I'm not sure if this is a, if this is what part of the Northkin um, ability is, or if this is a spell from uh, Borka too. But Defiant Rage, where if you take damage, um, you get plus two strength and plus two arm, which uh, sounds like it could be uh, pretty nasty on on beasts. If that's yeah, it's the similar Northkin. to what the uh, the Knight Exemplar Seneschal gets and Protectorate. Okay. Yeah, someone so, gets damage near him and he gets plus two, plus two. Oh, okay. I was going to say, yeah, like, yeah. okay. Yeah, the nice thing I that, see... uh, or Fraser, the Attuned Spirit Northkin, mm -hmm. that means that Borko will be able to cast an Animus for free, which makes sense with the Field Marshal Northkin. Ah, Northkin, okay. Dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a good one. Interesting. Ice. I hear a free rage is all right. <laughs> yeah, free rage, complain. free primal. Yeah, like all that stuff. So, so there's I, your interaction I mean, right there. Shoot, any 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 beast you take, free. Uh... Free animus. Yep. Yep. Free animus. Which helps with his fury of five. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, I wonder. That another another take I thought on defiant rage was maybe, um, like, uh, George Jacks have it where they. They get extra speed, but they take damage. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Yeah, that'd be a where they, you know. I just, I have to have anyway, moving on. Um, let's see. So I think uh, Fraser's being pulled away for a second. So yeah. we'll go to the next one. New model, huge based hooch hauler battle engine, beer cannon causes oil, seesaw catapult, and fire. <laughs> Holy dang. That's interesting because we got the – we're the first one to get a third um, Colossal or Gargantuan, and now we're the first to get a second Battle Engine that's not a Warcaster. I also wonder that's if oil will work like it does with the um, – with the oh, – Pro Critters. Thank you. Um, and being able to, to send out the oil and then have the, the uh, Fire Eaters uh, be able to get well, – I guess they're already getting boosted, so you wouldn't get that same effect. Yeah, it depends on the well, wording. Yeah, but it looks I, good. I I would imagine so, because I mean, why? What? It's not like it's not blind, so it's oil. So I imagine they're taking extra damage from the fire because of the oil, and they would continue to do so whether it's fire eaters or other sources. 
or maybe it just doesn't go out once you're, once you're on fire it keeps burning no matter what that'd be um, nasty but, what it, but it looks it looks interesting anyway. and and with the, the quality of the sculpts and just the way that everything looks lately i'm really excited to see this um, yeah that's going to be a lot of fun and what and like they were saying like these models should be out within like what a month or two of the release of the theme that would be so nice so That's that our, means we're stated goal, yeah. All right, that means we're expecting a new battle engine at least visually soon. Yeah. Look at. Well, did I think when they released the CID for Signar last week, they had a lot of the design drawings up almost immediately afterwards. We were able to see what most of that stuff was going to look like. So I would hope that they're going to follow the same model with this and be able to we will use, at least get the line drawing of what the models are going to look like. Mm. Yeah. So I think the next one is the veteran Northkin leader who gives everyone near stumbling drunk. Love it. That is so fantastic. Love it. <laughs> yes. Any Borka one player is going to be just ecstatic at that one. Um, now it does say pulled by bears. So I'm not sure if that's tied back into the huge base model or if that's uh, the stumbling drunk is related to the, uh, the, what's a, uh... A catapult being pulled by a bear. Yeah, so yeah, and bears seem to be a theme that they have, which makes sense with Borka too. So the, this, and this is the thing that kind of surprised me, and I'm so glad they're done it because it's, as Daryl, you and I were talking about about the fluff and that being part of the end, what draws us back to trolls, is there's a Krillstone alternative CA for Northkin. So rather than having the regular uh, elder, you have a Northkin elder that has three abilities, so plus two cold damage. Strength for, or sorry, uh, yeah, strength for warriors, and then a way to speed up the Northkin as well. Um, I, I guess the way they're reading plus two to cold damage, it has to have existing cold damage to get the plus two. It's not or that make it, it, maybe it makes the damage type cold. See, I was wondering about that, but that seems pretty, pretty strong, right? Because the idea well, is that the original, if the existing stone just gives you plus one strength, or we call it. I mean, yes and no. It's a double edged sword, so you get. You know, plus one damage applies to anything. Plus two damage cold. Yeah, you know, while you get plus two damage, if you ever hit anything that's immune to cold, can be affected by that. True. So you like, so you know, it's you get more damage, but you effectively maybe something's going to be immune to that damage. Yeah. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Daryl? Do you think it's? I really like this. Yeah, I love the speeding up because a lot of the troll problems that were just under the curve for speed. Yeah, agreed. Without applying a buff, so being able to speed up everything North King. Which, if you're going with a theme course, is going to be everything. Yeah, including uh, including your war beast because yeah, war beast. Uh, field marshal. That's yeah. fantastic. Exactly. Extra speed on top. Speed buff, plus your stone speed buff. Love it. Yeah, love it. And it's nice that they say that the. That's just like. Go ahead, Denny. Go ahead. I'll say that they say that it... uh, the strength of warriors. <laughs> I wonder if it's. Um... <laughs> I wonder if it's. I uh... love the lag. Um, I wonder if it's. Uh... The, you know, you know, the strength for warriors and duh, duh. Or, um, just like how we how we lost rage and um, and uh, the pirate trolls animus to uh, buff our warriors. I wonder if that's to try to fix for that. Yeah, could be. I also really like the fact that it, you could you're not limited to taking the new Northkin uh, CA in theme. You can take it out of theme, or you can pick either one. So you don't have to. If you if you find that the the existing elder is the one that works better for you, you can still take it. Right, unless you're going in theme. Obviously, yeah, you can only yeah. take the Northkin one, but, but yeah, yeah. So, so that's interesting. And I like, and again, um, it's it's uh, taking something that we we know well, giving us another version th that helps us get something else in the toolbox where we, it gives us something yeah. we can take. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with you, Fraser. Like this list, like we're not through it yet. Just so far, it has me really excited because I have a Borka two, new in box, that I got at the Sioux in 2016. Okay. <laughs> and I have not opened them. I, I, well, haven't been, I haven't been excited for them. Now I am. I'm seeing this and I'm like, okay, he might actually come out of the box now. Well, and one of our, uh, one of our uh, logo contestant winners, you know, they're getting the Borka too. Yeah. There you go. So re reason for them to put them together, get them on the yeah, table. Yeah, exactly. I'm excited. Um, you, a lot of people probably know this already, but I looked up oil just, uh, for those that don't, and for myself, because um, I'm so great at the rules, but uh, uh, models affected by oil suffer suffering a fire damage roll is automatically boosted. Nice. So, 
So those fire damage rolls from the from the hooch from the hooch holler are automatically boosted, and then anything else you get in that round uh, will be boosted. So, so uh, that way you don't. Actually... That makes a bit of sense because that way you wouldn't necessarily have to set your fire eaters on fire and potentially lose them to your own fire checks. You're you're not getting I your. Am so is, is is oil mean that there it's boosted damage but not boosted to hit, correct? Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, the roll is automatically the damage roll is automatically boosted. So it's a, it's a it's at least a a little bit of improvement for the fire eaters that because I don't know how many times I've set my my guys on fire and then they died the next turn because they uh, I spiked my uh, my my own damage roll. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that interaction. It, it gives you a choice. Do you want to take the pirate troll or do you want to take the hooch hauler? Yep. Nice. I know what I would pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the hooch hauler has a few more boxes than the pirate troll, oh, too. One or two. Uh, one or two. And, yeah. and stumbling drunk. Yeah. And pulled that's by the bears. reason right there. The yeah. bears. That's all the bears should be. <laughs> bears. Yeah. Someone's got to model little tutus yeah. around them, too. Oh, Giant. my God. Bear cavalry? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So... <laughs> So yeah, so the CA, right. I, I think new we're all loving the, the CA. So the new Warbeast, yeah, go ahead, Danny. Ice Troll, not the same as the Winter Troll. Uh, icicle Troll throws big icicles, so big ice spears. Um, it's got crit stationary, uh, no far strike. Uh, animus gives Swift Hunter. So no far strike, does that mean he can't be affected by a far strike, or his Animus isn't far strike? I mean, I, I read it as Swift. Yeah. Animus gives him Swift Hunter, yeah. And oh, first, that's interesting. Why not just say Animus gives Swift Hunter? Well, because I think all of our range guys have typically gotten, like, if you look at the uh, the Impaler and at the Bomber, they've had Fire Strike. So I think you're just calling out that no, he doesn't have, he doesn't get the Fire Strike Animus, no. but instead he's getting the Swift Hunter. And what does Swift Hunter do again? Um, Cost less. Note: Get damage from Krillstone. Just calling out some, elder? He's just calling out some synergy, synergy, right? So if you're throwing the, if you've got the the new Krillstone Elder, and you're under the aura, your your Ice Troll gets plus two to damage. Oh, now uh, I get what they mean. If you're doing so, cold damage, you get plus. So two. it is cold damage. I was, right. I'm assuming icicles would be cold damage. Maybe I'm just being a little right, too but on you're nose, like, but... you were saying plus two cold damage, so it's a way to give. A power boost, but it's limited to only cold attacks. So it's yeah. like, here, here's a really powerful attack, but it's limited in the fact that it only affects cold. Yeah, and I, and that that falls the theme of like the North theme, right? So it it's, yeah. it yeah. sort of fits yeah. in that model. Yeah. Does Let's that? Read it. This is like super early days, right? Yeah. Does that fix oh, any of this? Is subject to change? Oh, of course. Does yeah, that that don't take this. As... Sorry. Uh, the plus two cold damage does that fix the winter troll or even remotely? Well, he's got an eight-inch no. spray, so he's still. Well, you don't. Okay. <laughs> I like let me, the Winter let Troll. Me, my... let, me, let, me pull, let me pull him up. So, the Winter Troll was my answer to Una 2 because I could put his Animus on the caster. So, as soon as one of the, the birds flew in, they were knocked down at the end so that it they got rid of the gang and some of the, the buffs they were getting. So, so Spray 8, Pal 14 with the plus 2 cold damage. Pal 14, Spray 8's not terrible. The Rat 4 is, though. Yeah. Um, is he rat four? I thought he was. He was I thought he went up he to rat, rat five. Four. Oh, okay. Nope. He's rat four. If he was rat five, you would see him. Yeah. Because with this, because of power fourteen, rat five, it's boostable. Yeah, true. You would see that, especially with an eight point price tag. Otherwise, I don't. And until that rat hits five, I don't think you're gonna see him. Well, maybe we'll see yeah. him on CID. Yeah, hopefully. Maybe. Well, I imagine will... we. Would... Yeah, everything go. I mean, he's gonna be a big, a big key for. I mean, for the for the theme because I mean he's cold, so he's gonna be mm -hmm. just like the, the the jacks that got in on the trencher one. You know, that weren't really expected to be there, but showed up anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm and I'm kind of curious to see what the model looks like, too, because again, all the new stuff they've done lately has just looked so nice. Yeah. And by the cost, significantly less. I think they mean less than the 11 point impaler. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I always thought that uh, that was a little pricey, but you know, that's a discussion for another time. Yes. So this is the piece that I think has gotten me the most most excited is the bear unit. 
So this is a handler plus two large base combat bears. <laughs> Just the thought Sorry. of two bears going, and it's FA two, so you can get you get gang, ambush, and prowl. The bears get three initials, and oh, two, bite, two claws and a bite. Two claws and a bite. The claws are pow fourteen. The bite is pow fifteen. Gnarly. How gross is that? I'll so ambush. Not the... Oh yeah. man. Yeah, the ambush. The amb- point. Yeah, that. Is... Yeah, agreed. And whether or not we see them. Also, the price of the models too. Because two... point cost is what I mean. Yeah, I understand. How much yeah, but the dollar amount doesn't... is going to be. <laughs> We're gamers. We find a way to. Yeah, it's true. Stupid it's true. It's, it's true. It's true. People did buy the like, Sea King. <laughs> yeah. Like, we all own Mountain Kings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like 150 bucks. So true like, enough. Yeah, but he's worth those now, anyway. Right. Having right. A, a good, solid ambush unit, I think, will will cause a lot of people to, to think how they play differently or how they, how they play. So, this would be. A, a yeah, you got to be careful. It also depends on the careful. speed. I, I'm assuming bears are not going to be fast. So, and but I wonder if they. I fall. don't know, man. I mean, bears in in the real world, man, you don't run away from them. <laughs> so you know, they might be pretty quick. Speed, speed five, speed six. Well, in Canada, we just bark at them. Isn't the way we get rid of them <laughs> when they're walking around? Uh, just don't go to the dump, and you're fine. Yeah, true. Um, so yeah, so I'm. The question is. Sorry. No, the question is, is the handler is he is he the one that gives them gang ambush or prowl? Is it like is it like do you think it might be you choose one or well ambush obviously wouldn't be because it starts off the table but like how does the handler interact? Does he slow them down because he's the handler? Like so that's like kind of the 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 the, the, the I don't know the balancing point or is he like you know granted gang or I don't know. I wonder, I wonder how he plays into the. And also, you also Good wonder if, if you take out the handler, do the or do the bears become just unplayable? Like, if you don't have the handler, are they no longer in play? Right. Or does he have attacks? Yeah. It could be something say. as simple as he's like the 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 pig with the Northkin, right? He's mm-hmm. just a different stat line that's slightly weaker. That yeah. uh, That tones it down, tones it down a bit, right? Because yeah. how fourteen and fifteen with gang is a nice punch. Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. Then it's, it's, Two of them. That's that's six yeah. attacks. Six attacks with gang. Just just the yeah, bears. So yeah. Maybe that's his job. He's got a shit stat line, but he's there yeah. to apply gang. And if you yeah, take out the handler, then the unit is basically yeah, inert. It's a lot harder, right? Because yeah. the bears probably have like a half inch or a one inch melee, and the handler has two. Yep. Yeah, and so he's yeah, maybe the they, up in the middle. Well, maybe they act normally, but they lose. They like they lose the leader, so they can't you know run or charge kind of stuff. Yeah, like take orders. There, there has to be ways to mitigate how good they are to make sure they're not just like. E- no, either. there doesn't. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've been dealing with that for years. No, we don't need that now. Let them be the best unit <laughs> I, in the game. That's pretty exciting, though. That's yes, I, I'm, and again, I'm I'm so excited to see what the models look like because, um, I I sound like a broken record, but. All the like, even the 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 North can shaman. I picked up the two of them because you get them for free in every pod list that you have, and they were probably some of the nicest troll models I've seen in ever. And there's been a lot of really good models, so I'm I'm very excited. And then and we know they can sculpt the bear from from Berka. So. Oh, exactly, exactly. So this is the um, the last piece here, and this is sort of the the highlight. There, we're getting a new caster, so. The uh, it's gonna it's a coal grima is that the uh, or call grima coal grima it's probably coal, coal. yeah coal grima. Coal grima. <laughs> she's got an icy heart yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's it's just it's just bork and drag that's all it is um, the ice witch so she's uh, fury seven finally and, doing it right yes about time although I've been playing Calandra yeah. lately so fury eight is it you feel the yellow more wiggle room so. Um, Fury Five shouldn't oh, exist. That yeah. shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> well, again, Borka Two's in CID. He Borka Two would be so much better. We even with Six Fury. It just shouldn't exist. I mean, Fury Five with Top Off. Sure, I can get that. That's cool. You know, effective focus. Uh, Fury Seven, but like, I mean, Control Ten. That's just ridiculous. All right, sorry. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Yeah, no worries. So, no so argument here. More going back <laughs> into the fluff. So most lore locks that for Troll Blood for Shaman, she isn't. Um, she controls the weather, creates clouds. 
um, has witch, anti-curse, anti-magic, sort of they're referring to her as the Northkin old witch. Um, looks like a hunch, nice. hunchback old troll. Um, has arcane Maybe vortex. Maybe she gets parasite. Oh, well, that'd yeah. be nice, but... So arcane vortex, I don't remember off the top of my head. What's that spell do again? Somebody casts a spell at a target within three inches of you. Oh, and just on focus of fury, and it's negated. And that's just a native ability, right? That's not something that she has to, to a spell she has to put up. No, it's sort of an ability that your opponent triggers by targeting oh, something within glorious. three inches of you. Nice. Um, so effectively immune to spells. Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gore Shade Four grants it to his battle group. Okay. Ooh, it is mean. also, yeah. It's also on. Uh, Scourge of Heresy, Resnick's character, Jack. Okay. <clears throat> off, the, off the top of my head. Well, you know far more of them than I do, so thank you for that. Um, so she has a... I don't, I don't know much. Oh, don't, <laughs> you're, you're, you're already uh, hands and, head and shoulders above me. So uh, Cloudwall, same as Zerkova's, and Hunter's Mark. Yay. yay, super yay. Yep, that's good. And then the feat is similar to Kruger 2, where it pushes... Three inches, models ending in your activation are suffer blind. That is amazing. That is fantastic, especially in a Fury 7 caster. A control caster, that powerful in trolls. Like, can you imagine a pairing with her and Calandra? Oh, you make your opponent cry. Yeah, you trolls who can play a control pairing instead of a control and punch caster. Like, yep. so much choice. Love it. Well, I think that's what they... they I, I think they've heard us. I think they've heard us talk about that. That's one of the weaknesses we've had for a very long time. And hopefully that's where this is going. But uh, yes, I'm very excited to see this one as well. Yeah. Really exciting times. I think. Excellent. You'd be a troll player in the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping we'll get all the people jumping on board. So, cause then we'll get more listeners to the podcast. Slightly selfish reasons. So, uh... so Overall, if you had to pick one unit out of this list or one piece out of this list, what was your uh, your favorite, Daryl? Oh, jeez. Um, Putting you on the spot. I want Bear Cavalry. It's not on the list, but <laughs> <laughs> soon. Um, on like something I could get right now. Yeah, I would say an improved Borka too. Yep, an improved Borka too. Um, so I'm co I'm confused. Sorry to, to interrupt. Cloudwall, same as Zerkova's. Now is that same as Zerkova's Hunter Mark, or is that just same as Zerkova's? How does that read there? Zerkova has a Cloudwall. Yeah, I think it's the Cloudwall is same as Zerkova's Cloudwall, and then it's also in addition it has Hunter's Mark. It's not a spell, so how does she have Cloudwall? I'm looking. I'm I don't see it. You could do it as a feat. But I don't understand what you're asking. Well, uh, she doesn't have a spell called Cloudwall. Is it Freezing Mist? Place a three-inch AOE cloud effect completely within the spellcaster's control range. Yeah, just like the uh, the Northkin Shaman have it as well, where you can place a you place a three-inch cloud and then you pour it back. Same general idea. Well, I just I mean just that statement, Cloudwall, same as Zerkova's Hunter's Mark. I'm just trying to understand. I think you're looking at it as two different things. Hunter Mark is separate from the Cloudwall comment. Oh, okay, so where is Zerkova's cloud wall? I'm just looking it up right so now. So I'm looking at yeah, we'll look it up for you. I'm looking at both of her cards. I don't see it on their spell list, unless it's Freezing Mist. And if Freezing Mist is how much to cast? Um, Freezing Mist is cost two. Because I think what she, can, she can put down two or three of them side by side by side to get the cloud wall. If she's not casting. Uh, while in the AoE models without immunity cold suffer minus to their attack rolls. The AoE remains in the play for one round. She has a uh, cloud wall that like that. It does freezing mist. Is it freezing mist or is it something different? I don't think they've got I don't know. That's it's a weird it's weird to say. But maybe I didn't listen to the podcast, so maybe they're we're missing some information. Yeah, there. that's uh I haven't listened to the podcast either. Yeah. <laughs> Well, obviously, we know what we're doing. All tomorrow. right, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I was off track, but yeah, that, that cloud wall. Just, I was wondering, like, same as Arcova's. I'm like, okay, so that will give me some information because it's same as Arcova's, but I'm not, I'm not figuring out what they're talking about unless yeah. it's, you know, like I said, freezing mist. Well, yeah, actually, sorry. is there any? Uh, 
Nope, no one in the chat. I was to see if anyone in the, the Twitch chat commented on that to, to give us some insight. But we've got homework for next week's episode. We can clarify what we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's like freezing mist is more or less the same as like burning ash, things like that. So it's probably the same general idea. There's there's a, a precedent for it. Okay. Yeah. So. Two inches, here's a cloud. Here's a minus two to living models go. Yeah. So like the only difference between burning ash and freezing mist is one, if you're immune to fire, you're immune to it. The other one, if you're immune to cold, you're immune to it. So precedent. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, uh, but, um, you were saying uh, what you know, we're most excited about. What about you, Fraser? I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm excited to see what the the battle engine looks like. Again, bears close as closer to bear cavalry as we're going to get with this. What we're telling us so far, and everyone getting stumbling drunk. Um, I I'm also excited about the caster having a control caster right now. It sounds like a fantastic option for us. Um, and That's I will, exciting. much like my my uh, my opponent uh, Sawyer on uh, last week, I'm going to have a whole bunch of the rules printed out when I as soon as this lands, I'll be playing it this this as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> a little proxy machine with all my uh, my templates and uh, my little uh, proxy bases. Nice. Annoying my opponent as I look rules up constantly and probably get them wrong, but it's not much different than my normal game, so I guess I can't complain too much. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, we're actually getting close to the uh, the regular uh, cutoff time of eleven o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock Pacific. Um, was there any final thoughts or anything you guys wanted to cover off before we call it a cast? Um, I don't think so. I did discover the Trollblood Scrum RSS feed. If you want just to get that and not the hand cannon online, um, a whole. Um, buffet, okay. yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I linked it on the on our Facebook page, so look that up. Um, if you want that. Um, uh, other than that, I don't think so. I'm actually give me some feedback, guys. I'm wondering about doing some formats about uh, some community challenges, like if we were to say as a scrum, be like, hey guys, we want you to um, try uh, this unit. And, you know, report back, you know, try them in this capacity, you know, and see and report back, see how it does, see, you know, trying new ways to play the game and see if we can't um, open up new things and, and, you know, have write ups and, and give prize support and stuff that way for people that uh, participate. Um, let me know if that's something you guys might be interested in. Um, try to try to grow our community, tro- grow the scrum, grow, grow the trolls, you know, just try to try to break it open. Almost like your own little mini version of CID, except we're not changing the rules. <laughs> yeah, just trying to find new ways to play the game, you know. And maybe you guys be like, "Hey, I, but I play like this, and it seems really effective." Like, you know, okay, give us that feedback, and we'll put it out to the community and try to see how see how we can make things work or not work. Yeah, and 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 to that point, the other thing I want to do is we're trying to get a new section, and originally it was supposed to be about Ghost Fleet, but um, I think everyone's hearing about Ghost Fleet right now from every source, and it's usually Tim. Uh, we're we're starting a section which is the t- um, the uh, I haven't come up with a clever name for it yet, but it's basically the um, the scary list episode where we take a, a, a known list that everyone's re- reading about and seeing and seeing how trolls can handle it and how we can counter it and what to look for. So um, we are going to get uh, Tim Banky to come on for a few of these. Um, we may still do the the, the Ghost Fleet one, uh, even though he's doing an excellent uh, series on his his YouTube channel. Um, so if you have any lists that you want to see, like um, that you're you're seeing in your meta that you want to see if it's and we're seeing it uh, widespread, um, any lists that you want to see, I would have said before Una Two would have been the first one we were going to do, and then they nerfed that one, um, and then there was a couple other ones we were thinking about, but they've uh, we just they didn't come to fruition. So if you have a list you want us to sort of review figure out how have someone who plays it you know uh, explain how it works and what they don't want to see from troll side let us know for that because that's a, going to be a regular ongoing section going forward and daryl i understand you have a few uh podcasts and live stream things you could talk about briefly one or two <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh combo smite we do uh a not a battle report but we occasionally do battle reports but we do a podcast that drops every monday on our web page and on our Facebook, and we also come out on Wednesdays under Muse, and then on Thursday nights we live stream our games, and we uh, interact with the community on our chats. We're 
streaming on Twitch and on YouTube simultaneously. Um, and we recently recruited uh, three more guys to come with Splice. We've got some Kador Blood and Mercs, oh, a bunch more armies. I'm trying to remember the other one. I don't remember. I wasn't there. <laughs> Last week, I was a little <laughs> off after, after the kids' T-ball. So, uh, yeah, we've got some new blood coming in. Excellent. So if you're a, a new player, uh, we've got some guys that are trying to work in the competitive scene. I don't know why they're playing against me, but uh, they're, they're trying to uh, work on their game and, and get good, as uh, as they say. So, yeah, come out, hang out with us on Thursday nights. We usually start around uh, 7 o'clock, plus or minus a half hour. Yep, good. Uh, depending on the week. Uh, there's no fixed time, but uh, we usually have an active chat. And uh, yeah, check out our podcast. Agree with us, disagree with us, get some conversation going to get the, about the game. Excellent. And what we'll do is we'll post a link to the the Facebook page and to the YouTube channel as well in the show notes to be sure. and, extra uh, thorough. That can be the Menoth John uh, pimp as well. You can always find me uh, on Twitch at uh, at Combo Smite. And uh, yeah, like I said, we're on Facebook as well. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for for coming out tonight and talking about the uh, being able to take wild stabs at the dark at what the, uh, the the podcast detail was giving us. So, and I think they're saying this is is this next week this is supposed to land or the week after? Did they? I don't know if anyone's heard. Other than that, it's coming in soon. Yeah, I'll, I I haven't listened to the the prime cast yet. So okay. And in the future, at some point. Oh, excellent. And shh, don't tell anyone, but we're going to try to get one of the Wills to come on to the podcast to talk about it since they've done other podcasts and we've had Dallas on here before. So if that's the case, we'll uh, we'll let uh, everyone know. We'll be, be excited, but that's uh, we'll see what we can do for that. But shh, don't tell anyone. No one's supposed to know yet. We got we got to get Seacat on here, too, and talk some trolls. Yes, that's the one thing I have to admit. My, uh, my fluff knowledge is very surfacey. It's not to the depth of knowing the uh, the true uh, history of my favorite faction. I've read quite a bit, but I am pretty I am behind. Yeah, some of the factions are pretty good. I haven't wa- I haven't read any since uh, Gargantuans. Oh, okay. But uh, I'm excited. I don't know if we mentioned it or if I just blanked on it because you just said it, Frazier. Uh They're gonna start the flush the fluff again. Nice. Also, they're just sort of quarter starting in September. Also, they're sort of rebasing. It. Okay. It's not a reboot. Oh, that's good. They're going to clean up some inconsistencies, but yeah, starting from the get go, they're going to start publishing the fluff. Oh, they're going to start writing no it in the no quarter. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, they're renaming it no quarter prime. And it's just going to have tons of stuff. Go check out the insider. There's a lot of cool stuff on the insider. Is that a separate subscription from the no quarter? No, what they're doing is anyone who currently has a subscription to No Quarter, it's going to roll over into No Quarter Prime. The price is going up a bit, but it's going to be bigger, more stuff in it, and the first issue comes with a free model. What more could you ask for? Yeah. Uh, I love my subscription to No Quarter. <laughs> and uh, there's going to be, no after the Scorn book, there's no more Forces books, more theme books. It's all going to be in No Quarter Prime. Interesting. So... So some factions won't get them then at all? You won't get them at all. It's going to be in no quarter. Right, because some factions haven't gotten them yet, right? Correct. They just, they just decided not to go that way? Yeah. It's well, think... get, but it's nice because, well, there's good and bad. You don't get your own shiny hardcover book. You're also not paying $40 for it. Exactly. Oh, I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. The imbalance kind of bothers me because I'm kind of a balanced kind of guy. But I think it'll be faster for them and not, expen- and not expensive for them. I, I think it's I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Not to I mention, I think if you want the details, check out the the uh, insider. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. And I think to going back to your comment about you're not getting a book, but I mean, how many people use War Room for their rules now, anyways? And you don't necessarily. Right. I mean, when's the last time you referred back to a book other than maybe some some of the painting techniques and things like that? Or as if you rarely as possible. Flood. Yeah. So I think I think it's a smart move because I mean I didn't pick up the new book because I had war room there was no point and there were, because there wasn't much i don't think there was any fluff in the book and you didn't get all the models in there just to me it didn't make any sense so this to me it makes a lot more sense so yeah yeah the only book i got were the free ones that came in the battle boxes mm-hmm. and uh i won one of the hard covers nice, uh, nice. i had like all the signatures in it and i haven't cracked it 
<laughs> well, on that <laughs> on that note, it is uh, now past my bedtime. So why don't we go? We're gonna call this a cast. Thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll do this again uh, next week. And thanks, Daryl, for joining us. No worries. Have a good night, guys. Nice good night. night.